This show is powered by BL3P, the lightning enabled European Bitcoin exchange. Connect o mundo. Simon, mempool.space. Volvo is known for being the safest car manufacturer of Europe, but is it uh, also your favorite car manufacturer? No. Will Bitcoin always be preserved as too expensive? Yes. Living in Dubai gives the ultimate financial freedom for every Bitcoiner. Yes. Is Zlatan Ibrahimovic the greatest sportsman in Swedish history? Yes. Drugs only get you high once, Bitcoin gets you high for life. Yes. Cut Bular are Swedish meatballs made from famous by uh, made world famous by IKEA. IKEA. Traditionally, they were served at the Christmas buffet. They were then eaten with boiled potatoes and combined with a dark brown, heavily browned sauce of bouillon, pickled jernix, and a jam made from the ling lingonberry. Are these the best meatballs in the world? Yes. Abisko National Park in Swedish Lapland is one of the most famous national parks in the country. With an area of 77 square kilometers, it is home to an enormous amount of natural beauty and Scandinavian wildlife. Is this the place to clear your head after a long day of coding? Yes. I prefer the way of life in Southeast Asia more than Euro. Yes. To keep the current Bitcoin network security in the coming 20 years, we just need to at least double the price every four years along with the halvings. Yes. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? No. Welcome to the Connected World Weekly Podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. This is episode 48 of Connect the World. Steph, hey, good to see you. My friend Eddie, good to see Back you. Back from the dead. No, no, no. Back from the dead. What the hell? Why? Yeah, well, my week was... Uh, I'm, I'm talking about my week. No, sorry. Oh. How was your week? Yeah, yeah, fine. I mean, uh, nothing to complain about, I guess. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. So, uh, no, no, it was pretty, it was pretty good. And, and yeah, you, my, you are back from the dead then, or what? Yeah, be, be, because it, I, I don't know. I, um, it, it, it was very busy. It is still very busy, and I just had some days uh, that I, um, yeah, that my energy was dropping, and I thought, oh man, all these things that I need to do. Uh, and, cheer up, uh, mate. and now I'm, um, I'm chill again. So uh, this, this is a great moment. Oh, great! <laughs> well, happy to celebrate it with you then, uh, Edward. Thanks. Hey, and look, <laughs> yeah, at my, look, at, look at my shirt, mate. Yeah, I see it. It's great. I, I need to. Nice BL3P. Nice BL3P yeah. sponsor on uh, on the sleeve. Yeah, rabbits, rabbit man. <laughs> <laughs> rabbits, rabbit. No, but it's nice. But they actually they. Ramon is going to give me my cap because I have also a Connect World cap. Mm. And you're so, going uh, to wear it a couple of uh, twenty episodes we have uh, to record. Um. <laughs> well, I can wear it uh, once, uh, um, one time or more, of course, of course. <laughs> Especially <laughs> like, for you. Ah, oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> no, but I, I, um, I had two. Uh, how do you say that? Um, the the big ones, that the hoodies. Yeah. Uh, and and I had two because one had a stain the first day, so I. I uh, talked to Ramon. Do you have another one? And he has an had another one. I just cleaned them, so they're uh, it's, it's out a stain from uh, from Bry or uh, you you yeah, you, it, it, you dropped yeah, it was grease grease from the <laughs> from the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and I'm I'm gonna wear them uh, one time because uh, it's getting colder, and then the hoodie is sure. just nice. Yeah, sure. it really is. And, and I heard it's pretty. It's getting pretty cold at your place, so uh, you yeah, that's right. It. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a it's a great week. It, yeah, it, just w what I needed: a little bit sun, yeah, and a little perfect. bit um, uh, yeah, moment to to just uh, uh, take um, um, yeah. Well, 
I, I'm not a winter guy. I just don't. I, you're half Spanish, I'm half man. Spanish, I mean, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I actually, I, I do love the winter. I always love the sun and the, and the summer, obviously, but the winter too. And I, I, I hate it when it rains, but when, when it's yeah. really, really cold, I also like to win, to go out skiing um, uh, in, ah, okay. in, in Austria. Yeah. Uh, I, I go to... Next year I go to Val Toulon in in France and also yeah. to um, to Maurach in um, in Austria. So uh, one week with my friends and the other week with my family. So um, so but I really I really love the cold also. And but as long as it's not raining, it's it's fine. And um, I really love. Uh, and it can also be uh, pretty sunny, right? In in the in the middle of the winter, and then it's cold. Yeah, but, yeah. but you still got the fire. Yeah, but the sun and, is shining, and yeah, indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, hey, but Edward, nice. I want to talk about something because yeah. uh, we have uh, a beloved member within our Stushy Radio Rings of Fire community uh, and also the yeah. Ring of Fire community and also uh, the Stushy Radio community and yeah. the Connected World community. His name is Ton. And yeah. Ton, um, uh, he, he is doing a great job because we have uh, the, um, I think everyone knows the btcmap.org website. It's like an open source um, a map of, uh, well, it's, it's, it's looking a bit similar to Google Maps, but it's open source. And you can uh, pin all those uh, merchants who are accepting Bitcoin. Um, and it's yeah. very easy. You can do that right away at btcmap.org. They also have a uh, Android um, application. And I saw they are working on an iOS application too, but it isn't released yet. But I've seen it. It's very easy. You can just fill in the form. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, the, the yeah, coordinations. To, exactly. It's so easy. You have to put yeah. in a couple of, um, of details um, about that merchant or restaurant or whatever place is that you want to, uh, to upload. And then it's, getting, it's, it's creating an issue on, on GitHub. Uh, and Ton <laughs> is the one who is, uh, who is um, yeah, solving all the issues. Uh, so oh, uh, well, uh, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's it's really <laughs> a lot of work, and he is now uh, converting every uh, every single merchant from Bitkasa from Patrick van der Meijden yep. um, here in Holland. But uh, we we had a little chat uh, through DM, and and he he said to me maybe it's good because. Uh, the map is isn't uh, up to date yet, or it it, yeah. it is is getting better and better. But um, because it's open source, it's really it's really relying on data that users are uh, providing. So, so um, we need more contributors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So what I wanted yeah, to ask yeah. to everyone who's listening to our show, um, if you know a place in your neighborhood or uh, at the place you went to a holiday and you know they accept Bitcoin. Please. I know Pizzeria uh, here, so uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, and it, it isn't it isn't on btcmap.org still. I think it isn't. Because no. otherwise we have to uh, shut down this recording and you have to uh, put it on right away. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but uh, all, all jokes aside, because we I I, I do sure miss right I, I do miss a really good uh, application to search for a merchant who is accepting Bitcoin and 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 um, well this one looks very nice but the data isn't there yet so. Um, yeah, big shout out to all uh, our listeners and viewers. Um, please uh, help contribute to btcmap.org. Uh, and it's, um, I, I think, it's yeah, nice. Tom ex explained it to is. me that it's, uh, there's one way when you do it, that then it's not becoming an issue on GitHub, but it, it, it will auto uh, add himself to, um, and I think it, it, it is, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that was it. When you use the application, for, uh, the, the mobile ap application, it is auto uh, added to um, to the library, and if you do it through the btcmap.org website, it it's it uh, yeah it it will make an issue on GitHub. But you it's can great. also solve that issue, right? I mean, and Steph, I see, I, I'm seeing at a map now. Uh, mm -hmm. You can report outdated info. So if you're looking at your own city, yeah. then just go there, uh, check the places. If it's not uh, good uh, information, then just report it. Yeah, and you can and remove then, it. Uh, you can yeah. change it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, but but awesome. um, but to be this, uh, to be the 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 really uh, way to go, uh, beat, uh, map to to find every merchant in your yeah. neighborhood or the place you are at that moment. It it really has uh, has to to have the latest data so to everyone who is um uh yeah, willing to help please uh help us and ton you are doing an amazing job uh, by helping uh okay. the all the um, the issue solving uh, solve uh, at, at the github uh, and and i think i think there will be plenty of people who can help ton with it so um 
I'm not gonna dox you, Steph, but I see two places uh, on the map at yeah, your yeah, place. Yeah, I, I added oh, one. Great. I added a yeah. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. a second hand store and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so awesome. um yeah so so well that's it uh, for for now for yeah. btc map to talk but maybe well let's let's keep an eye on it edward um yeah, uh, we can we can keep track of of, really the, like um, of the progress and maybe we can yeah. uh, come back at it I'm at the future show yeah i'm gonna put it in the show notes and uh yeah no great yeah let's uh let's definitely do that and, okay um it's a great uh thing because uh flowing uh, make the sets flow right uh, that's only possible if you know where to where put to your uh, set in, where yes. to spend it and uh, use it. So yeah, indeed. Yeah. Keep it okay, who do we welcome today, Edward, as our uh, guest? This week we welcome Soft Simon. And um, that name rings a bell because he's a full stack developer and created and co-founded mm, the open source Bitcoin block explorer mempool.space. Which, which we, we all, all use, use, of course. <laughs> yeah, and uh, also non-custodial on your own uh, yeah, own, that's uh, the best notes. way. Yeah, that's the best way. So really looking Don't forward uh, to uh, to talk with Simon. But first, we have to talk a little bit about the statistics of our uh, Rings of Fire community and about the Lightning Network. Um, and then the second part will be with Soft Simon. Connectado Lumia. Yeah, and when I, I'm looking at the stats now, and I'm, I'm thinking you were saying that you had a pretty, pretty busy week, but I had also a pretty busy week, to be honest. Uh, but it, it, it didn't feel that way. So, But we added 78 million sets uh, last week, uh, Edward. Uh, 44.37 was the score of, of last week, and this week it is 45.15. Um, yeah. Bitcoin pushed into the Lightning Network through More our Satoshi Radio Range of Fire community. Uh, 1,483 members participating in over 198, 198 rings. Yeah, that's it. 198 yeah. rings. Yeah. Almost 200. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, we're now at block height 760,136. And we have uh, 17,086 uh, nodes in the Lightning Network with more than 5,000 Bitcoin into the network. Yes, uh, 1 million Satoshis is getting you $194, 197 euros, and 1,409 Chinese won. Yeah, and then uh, let's head over to the Daily Moon. Uh, some highlighted news updates from last week brought to you by the Daily Moon. Uh, let's start with Impervious. Uh, the Impervious API is a programmatic third layer that sits on top of the uh, Bitcoin Lightning uh, network. And Impervious announced earlier this year um, the first turn enabled uh, peer to peer video call in the history over the Lightning Network. Um, we also mentioned that earlier. Um, and we had to wait for uh, the Impervious browser, but now it's uh, ready. It's the alpha version. Um, and they uh, released it. And they call it the portal to peer to peer internet. And aside from uh, peer to peer encrypted video calls, which you can also uh, do, um, they also introduce messaging and decentralized login. Uh, well, check all the possibilities with the links in the show notes. Yeah, I uh, downloaded it. Um, and, and because it, you have Mac, right? Yeah. I have Windows. So. Ah, <laughs> that's a pity. But it, it works yeah, pretty well. But, uh, but I asked in our Stoshi Radio yeah. development group, have, has have, uh, anybody looked at the code? Because I'm not a coder. I can't verify if it's legit or because um, yeah, I really want to connect my uh, my lightning wallet uh, to it because then it opens up some whole new world of yeah, possibilities yeah. but i'm still a bit frightened to do that so okay. um, I, I didn't check if if yeah well if the code is correct and there are no weird back doors or something you know but um uh yeah, yeah. Maybe someone well, can can tell me that everything is all right, and then I still have to trust that person. I cannot cannot verify I it think, myself. Steph, <laughs> we need to ask someone uh, from Impervious to um, to talk with. I think that's that's, uh, that's the best idea. Yeah, so yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna write it and, down. And it has to I'm be a, a, a non anonymous. <laughs> so he has to yeah. be with with his face on camera. So yeah. then when when he drains all my lightning channels, we can search for him, right? <laughs> no, no. But, it, so but, but really, all, all jokes um, aside, it, it really looks amazing, and and it also feels amazing. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know why, but it it, it was it, it also were very fast. All the um, uh, URLs I typed in, it, yeah. it went uh, straight into the websites, and so uh, there was no uh, lack or delay. So yeah, Great. so, uh, yeah, I'm, so I, I think yeah. I'm I'm going to be a a future user. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and it, it's really different because uh, a lot of users use the Brave browser, um, and the Brave browser has also a token inside it, the the bad token. Uh, this is totally different. Yeah, well, yeah I, from, and I'm from now that. using Brave, um, so I, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I'm happy to switch but, but Brave over. Brave is, is is built on uh, Chromium, Chromium, and yeah. this this is uh, this isn't. No, so it's uh, that's yeah, a big, but they big they big use difference. they use the App Store from um, Mozilla Firefox, so I think there yeah. is something to do with Firefox, but no, I'm not sure what. I would say read into it. They have a nice website. I've added it to the show notes. Also their tweets. It works on Mac OS and Linux and they're still working on the Windows version. So let's wait for it and then uh, yeah, talk to uh, to them. And then uh, the Satimoto startup from Germany. Uh, it's a project to charge your electric vehicle uh, and pay instantly using Bitcoin over the Lightning Network. So no sign up, no credit cards. Um, they just got certified, that's the news, uh, to interact with over 200,000 charge points in Europe. That means play, uh, paying with a Lightning to charge your car has become a near future possibility. Yeah, and I looked Sounds it up, nice. but it, I, I couldn't um, install <laughs> the app yet. No. Nothing works uh, at, <laughs> at your site, <laughs> I'm telling the news. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no. No, 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 no think, it doesn't I, matter. I think so, we... So, uh, there are no uh, charge points near you. No, I couldn't. That, I couldn't right. install the app even. Um, oh, so okay. I, I, I put myself on the waiting list. So uh, maybe okay. I'm I'm going to do. It. Yeah, well, I do it right yeah. away. Why not? I but think I'm, I'm really Seth, curious. Ask someone for Satimoto <laughs> to, <laughs> to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but really, <laughs> would would be nice. I, yeah. I think it's a great initiative. I hope it works. Please let us know if it works at yeah. your place. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> let's head over to Geyser. Um, there uh, were a lot of people that um, were on the uh, proof of workshop stage, of course, uh, but I want to mention them uh, because um, Stelius Ramos and Mick Morucci from Geyser um, um, uh, presented a workshop on Bitcoin Amsterdam, and it was called um, the uh, Lightning Interoperability. Interoperability. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Yeah. And uh, for people who don't know Geyser, uh, check uh, our uh, quick talk. It's a lightning powered uh, crowdfunding platform. We did a quick talk uh, before uh, and they uh, showed in uh, the, the workshop how uh, they applied lightning interoperability in their own use case. And it mm -hmm. is very interesting. If you want to learn more than just uh, uh, check the, and uh, we the video. And also recorded a complete episode with them uh, from uh, our lightning lounge yeah, sessions, lightning right? Lounge. So Really together. nice guys, and we had a couple of beers yeah. with them afterwards. So uh, yeah, also on the last day at yeah. um, the Sound Manifest, the it was really nice. Yeah, great, uh, great guys. And um, then Breeze, Breeze tweeted about adding two more talented uh, developers to their team. Uh, they want to bring Bitcoin and Lightning to the masses. We did an episode with um, with Breeze, and um, with the help of uh, Ubabek, is a new developer that they just. Uh, added and one of our own Jesse de Witt. Uh, so if you're curious about Jesse, uh, because Jesse, we did an episode with him, a great developer, uh, also did something uh, for Lightning Labs um, and um, well, check episode 20 and his GitHub and um, I hope Breeze will uh, show a lot of uh, developments uh, the upcoming uh, upcoming year. So yeah, I've added all uh, all the links in the in the show notes. And then uh, I have one update that I wanted to uh, mention. In an earlier news update, we mentioned about Bitphoenix and Tether uh, launching uh, the alpha of Keats.io. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer chat and video app built with uh, the Hole Punch platform, uh, a platform which only shares end-to-end -end encrypted data between participants in your calls, so without a middleman, third parties or uh, other servers. Um, and they now activated Lightning in their application that wasn't, um, it was on their agenda and now they activated it. So are you curious, uh, check it out on their website um, to uh, see if it really works. And if it doesn't, we need to talk with them in an episode. <laughs> Let's do that. I won't try this one, okay. <laughs> All right. Do you want to read more? Stay up to date about everything related to uh, Lightning, the news and updates. Then head over to tdm.news and follow the Daily Moon on Twitter or Telegram. Connect the world. So, um, yeah, we balanced three rings last week. Um, and yeah. I think, was there... Oh, yeah, we had a first one, a first participant from Poland. Uh, ah, and he okay. was also 
the first ringleader, or he was also ringleader, so that makes him also the first ringleader from Poland. Starting with the 1 million Stoicis, 40, uh, 51st ring, Stacking Saunter, he was the chosen one in this ring, he is from Poland. Although he had no experience, he agreed on taking the lead and balance. He rushed his way home and instead of building, <laughs> oh yeah, first he just shoot the transaction. No fear for this, man. Now it was very funny because normally you, you <laughs> install the script. Well, you know the process, obviously. Yeah, you, install the, yeah. you install the script. And for those who don't know the process, check out our uh, workshop um, we did uh, um, uh, at Bitcoin Amsterdam. Uh, you can also link to that in the in the show notes. So it will be online. I, I hope it will be online tomorrow. Um, but uh, so he uh, normally you build the transaction to see if it has any errors. But, but yeah. this man, he instead of building it, he just sent it right away. And well, it isn't a big problem, but <laughs> um, yeah, it could be that uh, the fees were still amazingly high. Indeed. And then he yeah. had to pay a lot of fees for that transaction. But luckily, uh, the fees were already a bit low. Uh, so okay. he, he was very, um, yeah, I mean, he, he rushed, he rushed to, the, to his computer and he was eager to to balance it and and he did right away so that was very funny and we found out that he was the first from poland and so it was uh, again you know a social right. social uh, activity those rings of fires uh, guys yeah you, yeah it is it is if you never experienced uh, uh, this um, this whole happening i uh, yeah really encourage you to do and to join one of our rings i um, see uh, um, by the way two channels fr uh, one from poland to italy and one from poland to the netherlands yeah. on on the so, map yeah, so that's him. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, the two million Stosis 31st ring. Uh, busy Sunday at the office of Xadion, balancing one ring and opening channels to add others. We had some er errors, but changing the fee solved them so Xadion could easily balance his ring. A really nice job. Um, and then uh, finishing off with the three million Stosis 26th ring. Yet another smooth balancing by our ring leader, and I think his name is Michael, um, but he has all strange characters in his <laughs> Telegram handle, yeah, but it I is see. Michael. He really took the role seriously, uh, every, serious and prepared everything and everyone very well. We agreed on some participant, participants paying back the fees since they weren't able to lower them due to different time zones. We also had someone from New Zealand, but we always make sure all fees are paid back. So within these rings, we had note operates from Swiss, Holland, Germany, Belgium, Italy, uh, Poland, uh, and um, New Zealand. Yeah, well, that's that. Thanks again, Steph. And Thank you. let's go to the lightning notes. Let's connect the world. Make sure to secure your home network. So change default passwords and use two-factor authentication where possible and keep your software up to date. It's also very important. Uh, please keep in mind that the whole Lightning uh, network is very experimental. Uh, software like uh, MyNode, Umbrel, Resi, Blitz, for example, and many others, and LND also, uh, are still in beta phase. Uh, don't blindly run terminal commands on your nodes if you don't understand uh, them yourself, and especially when prefixed with sudo. Uh, and the last one is also very important. Don't use uh, satoshis that you're not willing to lose. So if you're not aware uh, of all security considerations, then read into it. Educate yourself, read articles, uh, ask for help in Telegram groups uh, with high reputation like ours, and uh, listen to podcasts and learn by doing. Otherwise, don't participate. Also, uh, you can stay uh, informed by uh, following us on Twitter. You can find us at uh, Satoshi Radio ROF and follow our lightning leader, uh, Johnny Kiyashu. Join our Telegram groups, Satoshi Radio, Ring of Fire, and Connect the World and check our website, satoshi.radio. It would be nice for you uh, to be part of our uh, Emboss community. You can find us there on uh, Satoshi Radio and like and subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. Use Podcasting 2.0 to listen to Connect the World and you can uh, check uh, sat.trading for the current value. Uh, you can find all this information, of course, also in the show notes as well. All right, let's get on to the show. Verbind. <laughs> you are very honest with us, uh, Simon. Yeah. You, you, you are in Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, I can't lie. So. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, and we heard you are a real digital nomad. Um, how come that you choose to live a life like that? And how, how do, you, do you like it? Or uh, are there also some downsides to it? Well... I initially, I just wanted to get out of uh, my home country, which was Sweden, to, to like, 
to, <clears throat> yeah, to to firstly go to a country what's that's warm. That uh, was like yeah. my, I think my first, and also to have some time to uh, work on Bitcoin at the same time. And uh, yeah, I, I I've been like a nomad for over five years now, five and a half. And uh, yeah, I can say it's a great experience. I can recommend it, especially <laughs> if you're a bit young, I think, because I feel now the older you get, the, the more uh, tired you are of just traveling around. You want to settle <laughs> yeah. down more and more. Yeah. So, so recently I've been more and more settled down. Uh, long, cool. I would say. Cool. Yeah. And it's, it's, is it still at a sunny place or are you back in Europe? Of course, of course. I'm, I'm in Dubai right now and it's blue sky every day. It's perfect. Just every like day I, the I same it. or is it, uh, every does day it change? Every day the same. Sometimes okay. it's a little bit uh, <laughs> sandstormy, but uh, usually it's just blue sky. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> nice. Well, and you let me f uh, also welcome you on the show because we, uh, we didn't uh, do that earlier, but um, oh, thank and you. Now, now you're saying uh, Dubai and I uh, was thinking, well, um, they say it's very common to offer uh, the possibility to pay there for uh, large uh, things like houses or, or cars uh, in Bitcoin. That is normal there. Uh, why is it there more common than, uh, than in other countries, do you think? Um, good question. But I think that Dubai is very special like compared to most countries or cities. Because yeah. Dubai, is, it was only a desert and it started to be an icon economic free zone to attract foreign capital. That's like the whole business model yeah. here is only yeah. attract tourism and foreign capital. So they do anything that attract money. And if Bitcoin can attract people to invest here, yeah. that yeah, we want to accept Bitcoin. So, and yeah. also it's, it's not as since the country, the UAE is not connected to the US or the EU financial system, it's not as regulated. It's more economically free, free here. Like people can come in with uh, bags of cash and buy an apartment. So, and they don't really care where the money comes from. And so the same with Bitcoin, it's, you can just, yeah. that's why you can use uh, some exchange or pay with Bitcoin because you don't have to do the same due diligence as you would have yeah. to do in the EU. Yeah. For example, I know they will ask you every single cent where the money comes from. So, so you said yes at uh, the ultimate financial freedom question. And, and, and I thought yeah, immediately, well, <laughs> this is the citadel, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, no place is perfect. And every no, place right. has a government that has a central bank that hates Bitcoin. Also, the central bank here also hates, hates Bitcoin. So yeah. it's, it's not easy, like the banks in general don't like it. But currently here, the financial freedom is very high compared to many other places so like i said you're able to live your life here only on bitcoin if you want to but nice. when i say only on bitcoin you can't pay for bitcoin everywhere but you can at least sell bitcoin for cash maybe and then you can spend the cash on so, so you don't need to use the banks if you don't want to but have you have you tried uh, maybe at a merchant or something to 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 uh, buy something some groceries with bitcoin or something like that or no and not here so okay, I don't, not, I don't know any place here. I, I know that our merchants are starting to accept and a lot of merchants, there's a lot of nice headlines often, but sometimes behind the headlines, it's not as great. Uh, something that's been very common here now is that a lot of merchants, they start to accept Binance pay. So you need yeah. a Binance <laughs> a KYC account and then they accept it. Yeah, so yeah. Ah, it's okay. not really, but uh, I don't know. We, we might see some uh, good things coming up with the, uh, with actual, the government is embracing Bitcoin. So we'll see if they, okay. if they yeah. get some actual Bitcoin adoption soon. We, but yeah. we need to contact the, the guys from Ibex uh, at what they have yeah, to- Yeah, Ibex uh, Mercado or- They have to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, to work, uh, <laughs> to work the ass off in, in Dubai. <laughs> Making it more uh, easy, but because yeah, well, it's, uh, it, it, it can be very interesting because yeah. the climate there is, uh, is exactly the, yeah, uh, that's the thing uh, Bitcoin perfect needs. For, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yes. And, yeah. and, and uh, can you tell us something more about your background? What did you before working for, for Bitcoin or before you uh, um, uh, yeah, started with the mempool.space project? Uh, my background is, uh, I think, web development, web developer. It's what I studied and... Uh, I've been working at some different companies doing web development related stuff. Uh, so I've always been uh, interested in building like a good web experiences, uh, like easy, easy to use yeah. uh, visual, uh, visual tools like that. So 
mempool was just when so when i started to get interested into bitcoin 2017 i started to make small bitcoin projects and i think mempool space was like the third project i made so it's just can you share some of your others or or don't they exist i I had a I made a, a, a site called satoshis.club, which is not online anymore because I shut it down. But yeah. it was like a clone of medium.com where you can post articles, but you yeah. can also um, earn lightning and you can donate lightning to articles to vote, cool. upvote and, and things like that. So that was like a lightning idea I had. But I, I didn't have many visitors and it takes time to develop. So I just shut it down. After a few you, months. you were so really great great, domain I name. I mean, satoshi.com. <laughs> Satoshi.club, but it was in... Oh, uh, .club, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was in uh, 18, I think, because I saw, mm-hmm. you remember the Satoshi.place website where you pay for pixel, one yeah, pixel, one yeah. Satoshi, yeah. So that's why I got uh, the idea of I want to use also Satoshi.something. <laughs> cool, cool, nice. And, and yeah, well, I mean, Mempool.space, I, I use it uh, very often and I really like uh, um, the look and feel of the, of the page, so... Uh, yeah, you, you really nailed it uh, with that. Um, and uh, yeah, also within our community, we always use mempool.space to see if one uh, your, your channel yeah. opening is uh, is already uh, scheduled in a block or something. So um, yeah, really, really uh, um, yeah, great, great uh, website to use. Uh, and we have all kinds of questions for you about mempool, of course, but also yeah. on your, uh, Go ahead. your vision uh, of the, on the <laughs> Lightning Network. But it has to be in the 21 minutes, uh, Simon. Mm. So. That's um, fine. We would really li- like to know if you are ready for the 21 minutes. Uh, sure. Okay, cool. Great. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Connetti il mondo. Well, let's start off with uh, Mempool. Uh, it's nice because we uh, call it Mempool Meets Lightning Network. Uh, during the mm. Riga conference, uh, you announced the Lightning Explorer integration on uh, Mempool.space. And uh, we see on the site it's still in beta. Um, why is that? Are there any extra things coming up um what are the next steps uh, to uh, yeah that ne- are needed to uh, go in alpha mode um <laughs> i mean software is always like <laughs> developing so but uh, i think the main reason was that uh, i mean we are new to lightning so we wasn't sure that we could tell everyone this is uh, everything you see is correct and all that we want to make sure that we want to in the first few weeks we know we're going to get a lot of bug reports and we we are still working on correcting some graphs like with what's the tor capacity yeah. what's the clear net capacity stuff like that we're still working on uh, so yeah it, it's not a i mean software is always on, on under construction never finished so so it will always be ongoing but I don't know. We'll, we'll remove it. The beta tag. <laughs> the, the lightning network itself yeah. is still in beta. I was so. <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and what are the differences between you and the other lightning explorers? And how did you reinvent it? I mean, we always had the vision of uh, making an explorer that explores like the full Bitcoin ecosystem, all the second layers, all the layers. So finally, we finished the lightning explorer so now what we are different is that we are the only or the first multi-layer bitcoin explorer where you can explore mainnet and second layer and it's all integrated and of course it's also the only one that's open source yeah yeah, Yeah, the only uh, open source multi-layer bitcoin explorer yeah indeed and um, well, uh, lightning statistics uh, on mempool.space, uh, you told us already, uh, well, show uh, more than uh, 4,500 Bitcoin of clearnet capacity and over 339 Bitcoin Tor capacity. Um, how does this data um, works? Is it correct? And uh, why is there a huge difference in your opinion? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but... Uh, uh, between just... clearnet and Tor. Yeah. That's the... Yeah, the, if you look at the website right now, we, yeah. we added a third option set, ClearNet Plus Tor. So, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. I think we're going to add a better graph, like a Venn diagram. You see that uh, that there's some nodes that are also ClearNet and also Tor like together. So to give a more clear image of the network. So when, when we launched, launched it, it wasn't that clear. and uh, A lot of people got confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> then we well, counted, if- yeah. And then if the ISP is not uh, identifiable, then it's uh, an unknown capacity, right? 
Um, um, unknown capacity. If it's not, if the ISP is identified or not, doesn't matter. Either it's clear net or either it's store. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You get you got uh, Edward also a bit confused. I uh, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and and quants and traders sometimes need very difficult and complex analysis to make decisions. This requires uh, heavy hardware to calculate everything. What kind of on-chain data could mempool that space offer or bring to this type of users in the future? I don't know. Are you guys traders? <laughs> we oh, have a I'm less. <laughs> <laughs> The, we don't have any, uh, I don't think traders or, or any of our customer group right now, or we don't have any like corporate sponsorship or partners that are traders. That's why we haven't built any tools for this kind of uh, group. So what we, what we do is like, we just visualize and display what's on the blockchain and what's in the lightning network and yeah. people can make their own decisions. And we don't really have specific uh, things for a specific niche market like that. Okay, and it is, is it, isn't it also something you could develop or is it not something you want to develop? Yeah, really? it's it probably something we could develop, but we have a strict policy of only doing things that make sense for the Bitcoin only, uh, perspective. But if yeah. we have, if we partner with some, if you have, if you get an enterprise sponsor that, uh, fund this kind of development, we might consider doing it. Cool. And um, Simon, the, the, the mempool open source uh, project currently shows uh, 12 lightning nodes in California and Frankfurt. Uh, these nodes provide all the valuable data, of course, uh, of the graph to the website. Uh, are these nodes all run by mempool.space? And, and how uh, do uh, those nodes provide the data? Yeah, exactly. So we have, uh, we have three sites now, one in uh, North America, one in Europe, Frankfurt, and, and the one in uh, Tokyo, Japan. So mm -hmm. they are going to serve the different uh, uh, areas of the world. And at each place we have, uh, I don't know how many it is, but eight servers or something like that. So all the nodes you see there are like one of our servers. So we run one node on each server. So those are the nodes where the data comes from to cool. visualize and everything. It, yeah. and, and, if, and if people want to help them with the space, how can they help to get more precise data to those uh, nodes and the website? I, I mean, if they want better connectivity or a gossip or something, they could open channels to uh, our nodes. Um, okay. Otherwise, yeah. if they want to help in any other way, just, I mean, uh, contact us on GitHub or reach out to us anyway. Yeah, great. And uh, well, uh, last year, uh, more than 15,000 unique users utilize mempool.space every day. Um, what about the numbers today? Can you give us some insights? of the usage uh, nowadays? And is there a difference uh, that you notice between the bull and bear market? Sure. Um, we had a very big uh, growth in users 2021, I think, and forward, especially after uh, Cash App, you know, it's, it's an American yeah. financial app that we can't use in Europe. But when, when they activated uh, to mempool that when you open a transaction you go to mempool we almost we just doubled our traffic in, in one day <laughs> and uh things like this as and and you have kraken and all these yeah big platforms so so our traffic is really big right now and uh, we have around or almost uh, a million visits per month right now Crazy. and even even though it's um yeah. even though it's a bear market we've seen a slight like increase where on other metrics we see a lot, lot of metrics are going down. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the, but the mempool visits are still like slowly creeping up. So is there that's, a that's very yeah, that's there? very yeah, interesting. That's what, what could be the reason then behind it? Even maybe the adoption is also still growing a bit. Then, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I just think I I don't know if the Bitcoin adoption grows, but I've seen that more people are us maybe switching to mempool space. I've ah, seen okay. more people on Twitter. They usually maybe they link to Blockstream on info or something for things, yeah. but now they link to Mempool Space. <laughs> Very ah, simple. Ah, so cool. It might be like a flipping. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> well, and, and with the Lightning uh, um, metrics on it, uh, that's really mm. interesting uh, for all those Lightning users. So, um, yeah, that could be uh, a lot of more uh, users uh, utilizing it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, and it's because the, 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 the website is very appealing, right? I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the main reason, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. And what kind of hardware do you use to run mempool.space? Do you have more than uh, one location to run the server to uh, guarantee uptime? We already heard that you, you spread. Um, yeah, the just over. like I said, we have, uh, we have three sites and every site has a bunch of servers that run uh, uh, in parallel. And uh, yeah. once every server has a lot of uh, RAM, like several terabytes of NVMe RAM, so that the whole blockchain, you know, the blockchain is like 200 yeah. gigabyte or something. So, But the index just to serve like all the transactions, all the addresses, everything in the Bitcoin history, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just serve direct from the RAM memory, NVMe RAM. So that's why we have okay. terabytes of, of RAM, NVMe yeah. memory. Um, that's why it's make, so fast. Like, quick, yeah, to make it quick yeah. lookups. Yeah, because when you click a block, then you see instantly the transactions uh, which are in. Yeah, it. yeah, and yeah. we have many layers of caching as well to to make this possible. Right. So so yeah, we worked very hard on uh, making. Yeah, it of course. Possible. Yeah, <laughs> that's so important. If you have so many users, then uh, yeah, and um, yeah. it's also possible to install it uh, an instance of mempool.space uh, on your own node. Um, do you think this will remain important for a lot of people to verify themselves? in uh, in their own uh, non-custodial way yeah of course <laughs> when i started the project that was like the main goal in mind that you you should be able yeah. to self-host it you should be able to run it on your own node and uh so so um, we work on the the main website and then we make it to work on the raspberry pi devices and we might have to tweak some stuff and turn off some some more advanced features but uh we are, we are shipping the versions to all the node devices, like the Raspberry Blades, the Umbrel App Store, yeah. MyNode, all these guys. So you just yeah. can one click install and you get the, your own mempool <laughs> block explorer. So you just like yeah, that's great. run, yeah. be your own bank, you can be your own explorer. I have to Indeed. confess and that uh, I'm, I'm using Umbrel and I also installed it at my Umbrel node. And I have mm. to confess that sometimes uh, I'm, I'm, they think most of the times I'm just, uh, typing it in my, uh, my browser, um, to, to look up my transaction, but yeah, sometimes you just want to have that extra verification, right? And then you can just open up your notes, spin up your note and just check it on your own note. So yeah, it's, I, yeah, I have it set to in my Electrum wallet. When you right click and see view on Block Explorer, it opens to my umbrella Block Explorer. So you can do that ah, and cool. you automatically yeah, don't smart. have to think about it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and when you, oh, no, of course, I have to say, like, when you do that, when you look up a transaction, it goes just from your node, and nobody in the world can know which transactions you're looking up, yeah, which addresses you're using. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. the whole point of Bitcoin, like, right? Yeah, to make indeed, it all yeah. trustless. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, you're uh, typing in a UTXO, and then everybody knows that uh, if yeah. it's trackable, and yeah. And Lightning Labs announced the alpha release of Taro Daemon, uh, enabling developers to mint, send, and receive assets on the Bitcoin blockchain. Will mempool.space also make these asset transactions visible in the future? Um, I can't say, I can't just say yes for sure, but uh, <laughs> we are definitely uh, looking into it. And I think it's very interesting. So if, if Taro is something that really catches on and everyone uses, we, we, probably want to show it integrated right on the website so people can show taro nice. nodes or taro transactions so how yeah. how because i'm not even sure myself how it works uh <laughs> yet but uh and how, how how it how you can even if you can detect it or something but mm -hmm. but, but yeah we want to support things like that that makes it easier for people that use bitcoin and lightning so Awesome. most probably yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and well uh, you like to visualize things with mempool like uh, um, uh, lightning liquid testnet uh, would it be a benefit for the users to bring their um, these environments into 3d uh, visuals <laughs> to well, make the extra appeal. I mean, <laughs> yeah i mean people if they if someone wants they can try to make a 3d vr uh -huh. mempool uh, it, i i i don't think I will do that crazy stuff because I, I like to make something, the features more uh, user, user friendly. It has to be usable, like something yeah. that you can have practical use of, not just look cool because then maybe you just look once and then that's, never yeah. again. Yeah. So I no, think what right. you've done with the, the visuals on mempool space, you can actually, like when you click on a block, you see the visual, visual representation of the block and you can 
Like there's a lot of stuff that I think it's very practical as well. It's, it's yeah. Your, yeah. your time is also very you. limited, right? So you have to <laughs> spend it on yeah, the things. Yeah, of course. That, uh, I, I, I can't do uh, uh, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I really like the the the, the block uh, um, visual because there you see a square with all the the different blocks, uh, big ones, small ones, and I uh, remember that uh, I had um, an app on my uh, computer to see which files are bigger than other files. So mm. for me, it's yeah. very uh, uh, yeah, very it's an amazing visualization, it, and it was made by Mononaut, who uh, made ah. the website Bitfi.live. It was yeah. a collaboration with him to integrate his visual. So yeah, it was awesome. perfect. Cool. Yeah. And, and you tweeted not so long ago that people are fleeing the US dollar as a safe haven uh, just to be rug pulled by the, by the money printer. And that yeah. in the future, Bitcoin will go from being seen as the risky speculative asset to a safe haven currency by the masses. But what steps are still needed for this to happen and to make Bitcoin less risky in your opinion? Yeah, I tweeted that because we have seen for a long time that the dollar is just pumping and Bitcoin <laughs> is crashing, right? Yeah. Because people say, oh, no, Bitcoin is too risky and they oh, we want dollar to be because it's safe. But they don't know that they people buy the dollar, but then when f people finish buying, they just rock the pole and they, they print all <laughs> the dollars and everyone gets wrecked. Right. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's a switch that people don't really understand yet. Only Bitcoiners understand it. That's why, because if everyone understood it, Bitcoin wouldn't crash because nobody would sell no, no, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, what needs to happen is like it, it just time. I, I think it takes time for people to understand more uh, fiat currencies have to crash and Bitcoin has to go up more and more capital has to enter Bitcoin and Bitcoin has to be more stable, not so volatile. So it has to get away from its reputation of being too volatile and it has to function for you know, maybe just not maybe 10 years, but 20 years. And so you can say it's so new, it's risky. It's actually worked for 20 years and people will feel more confident. So yeah, time, yeah. confidence, yeah, uh, stability. And those those you, are the perfect, perfect key words that describe Bitcoin for me, uh, I must say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, if you look at the top um, ISPs uh, hosting Lightning nodes, uh, then the number yeah. one and two are uh, Google Clouds and Amazon.com. Alibaba, I, I saw uh, that on number seven. Do you think uh, this will become a problem in regard of, to the decentralization uh, of the, the Lightning network? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> when you say, I mean, the data is a little bit, it depends how you interpret them, because you say... yeah. I don't know, you said most of the noters or something, but it's, it's only looks very bad when you look at capacity because there's just a few nodes, like five nodes, like the Bitfinex yeah. and the, the River, those huge lightning nodes that are hosted on clouds that make the pie chart look very bad. But if you mm -hmm. switch the toggle to show what uh, node count, not by capacity, you see that it's much, much more distributed on all around the world because smaller nodes are hosted anywhere else and also tor nodes are not not there if you include tor nodes as well you get an even better uh distribution so yeah uh, i mean so it's a little bit about um how you read the data but uh still yeah it's uh, cloud providers is uh is like a security uh, problem so can be yeah can be yeah, so hopefully yeah. yeah it can be because if you if one cloud provider decides to ban everything that has to do with lightning you will kill maybe one third of the network or something that would be yeah, a, uh, a big hit to the lightning network so it's better to distribute more and i think people when seeing these visualizations i know when we when we published the lightning explorer and showing these graphs people got crazy on twitter and uh, i even saw people uh, some companies said that okay we're gonna switch to our own or something after uh, citing this data so i think people will look at this data and make adaptations to improve yeah. the lightning network but just so we are just exposing we're just showing how it looks like and i think cool. just that would lead to uh, people so basically, a thing, so basically you gave a uh, big part is the incentive to to to, to, yeah. to become more decentralized exactly exactly cool. maybe you are hosted on amazon and you see the pie chart and it's like holy shit holy i don't shit. want to be in that pie chart <laughs> i want to yeah find yeah. a mm. Self-hosted uh, uh, solution, yeah. 
Mm. And, and something when like you that. look when you're looking at uh, the, the charge and the, of the amount of the lightning nodes per, per network and then the total capacity, you see that from April this year, and we already talked about it a little bit, the amount of nodes is falling, and but the total capacity is rising. And do you know why this happened? And do you no? Uh, and no, you don't know. But what do you think will happen in the next year or two? I, I I'm thinking uh, myself that yeah. maybe because some some big uh, players uh, entered the space like Kraken and they put a hell lot of, of Bitcoin into the Lightning Network, of course. But yeah, yeah I think some states that big uh, big nodes that are adding like the exchanges, and then maybe because it's a bear market, maybe there were a lot of people that was playing around with lightning nodes and uh, on the raspberry pis maybe and maybe they're shutting them down so the now the node counts going down could be i, yeah. I can only guess yeah, perhaps okay <laughs> uh, it's something to uh, keep looking at i think it's uh, it's interesting and then yeah. when the bull market uh, will uh, arise well um, what do you see as the most important feature to the lightning network that is currently missing could be anything <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I I, th I was thinking of this uh, question, and um, yeah, I think my answer is uh, splicing. And if people don't know what splicing is, is that when you uh, instead of closing a channel and open a new channel, you just yeah. make one transaction to augment and update the channel. Because uh, I'm, it's something that I I really like the Phoenix Wallet for mobile. Perhaps you know the Phoenix wallet, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. from, from it's, Claire, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's perfect because it's so automatic. It will open channels for you. But something that I find it's very annoying is that every time someone sends a transaction to you, like an on-chain or something, it will open a new channel. So you look at your settings and you have maybe five channels or 20 channels that have opened automatically. And then you want to close all, you have to pay transaction fees maybe for 10, 20 channels. But if we had splicing, you could have only one channel. And mm -hmm. every time you need more capacity, it will just update that channel. Yeah, so yeah, in the yeah. end, let's say the fees are very high, then you only have one transaction to close yeah, in the yeah. end. So it will save a lot. And it, I think it will improve all the mobile wallets a lot. One channel for life. That's what... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Said, you, yeah. you just have to have one channel. I think especially for uh, like mobile wallets, so like mass scaling, mass yeah. adoption. But yeah. the for uh, routing nodes, probably less so, but also as well, because I see mm -hmm. a lot of routing nodes, they are, maybe they have a huge channel and they close the channel and they open a new one. So it costs two, two transactions, but if they can only make one transaction to update, it would help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this and could uh, be, all, all, yeah, it could be also possible for, for Breeze wallets, for example, to, uh, for new, yeah, Neutrino yeah. nodes. Absolutely. Then, all yeah, lightning yeah. wallets. And then I have a second, uh, feature because it's also the the any prev out thing if you mm -hmm. know what that is mm -hmm. it's yeah. um because that would uh, make lightning scale much better you don't have to store any previous state no no yeah yeah. Exactly. In, in, in the Lightning Network, I can hear the TikTok, so I want to just yeah, yeah. ask you one more. <laughs> in the Lightning Network, I view the node and channel count and the channel capacity, but what is uh, more important is the amount of volume being transferred inside the network. This data is private, obviously, which is a big advantage yeah. for its users, and we want to keep it that way. But what is the best way to measure the adoption of the Lightning Network without knowing the exact, exact volume that is transferred? You can't. You have to see capacity. <laughs> You have to see it. You just can go by capacity, I guess. Okay, and, and maybe the the the, the notes, uh, the the amount of notes has to has to increase uh, again. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> That's a strange question to end like this. No, it's no, it's okay. We, it's okay. We, uh, um, we we love to keep it a bit of um, how do you say it? Uh, um, uh, yeah, how do you say it? Light or uh, light? Yes, light. Yeah. <laughs> that that was a mm -hmm. word I was searching for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we had a lot of more questions, but um, we would love to have you uh, in a future show to uh, ask uh, a lot more. And then perhaps mm -hmm. the Lightning uh, beta version is uh, set to alpha. And then uh, we. Uh, you know, we can alpha ask is uh, even more underdeveloped than beta, right? So alpha is when it's under construction, and beta is when it's finished, but maybe. That's burned. right. Yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> next generation, then the next generation lightning uh, metrics in uh, in mempool. All right, um, let's continue. Tilknut, well, 
So last week we had Romain Rouvel, and he's a fintech entrepreneur who uh, co-founded Ito and uh, developed NM Markets. Uh, we asked him to come up with a question for you, um, Simon. Uh, Edward will play the audio file and, do, and then you may answer it. Um, well, first congrats because he built a, a, an amazing product that we use every day. So congrats on this. And speaking of building beautiful and great products, uh, what do you think, you know, if you had to pick one feature for Bitcoin or Lightning, uh, what, which feature, which new feature w w would you pick in order to maximize Lightning adoption? You know, if it could just be one feature, which one would you choose, you know, to enable mass adoption of Lightning? Yeah, we already hard question because bit, right? yeah, a bit because uh, I mean, I don't think there's a single feature that stands between mass adoption because uh, yeah, because it's uh, I think mostly it's about network effect. Like we need more like wallet services, uh, merchants, uh, exchanges that implement Lightning, and then it will come more naturally. But if I had to choose one, I uh, think I will go for a. Um, the the standardized combined uh, on-chain and lightning qr code so if you're an exchange if you are a wallet the user should not know if it's lightning or on-chain they just scan the qr code and it, maybe it will say lnbp instead of bitcoin or lightning it's just an lnbp scan this and automatically in the background it will figure out is it lightning can i pay with lightning it will try if it can't or if it fail it will go on chain i think that will be a big thing yeah, cool. And it already cool. exists, okay. like uh, suggestions for this. It already exists, but uh, it, it has to be implemented everywhere, like on the exchanges and, and wallets. Yeah, the yeah. whole spectrum, uh, the whole mm. ecosystem, yeah. Um, well, next time uh, we have a new guest. His name is René Picard. And uh, for those who don't know him yet, he's a data scientist, a consultant and co-writer of Mastering Lightning Network and constantly working uh, with open source work and research on Lightning. And we also want uh, to ask him a question from you. And you prepared a question. Which, uh, which uh, question can we uh, ask him? So I will ask René, um, in, let's say in 10 years from now, will average people be able to have lighting channels? Or will all people, like regular average people, use lighting custodially? Or will they use non-custodially? Cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very curious about the answer Renee is giving yeah. to it. <laughs> but we, we have to wait for one week. That's, yeah, that's the, we, the hard part of this, right? And not speculate because otherwise he will listen and then... Uh, <laughs> no, no. It's, ba it's basically a scaling question because yeah, yeah. it's a tricky thing with scaling a lightning to, to mass adoption. So Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's okay, a thanks. promise, right? Scaling. So important. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks again. Yeah. Tilkin. Well, thanks yes, thank for you being very much, show, uh, Simon, Simon, for yeah. being on the show. And, and where, where can people follow you? Do you have maybe a Twitter uh, people can look up? Or uh, obviously, yes, mempool.space? Twitter, they should go to mempool.space. They should follow me. And uh, I am at softsimon underscore on, on Twitter. And you should yeah. also follow the at mempool account on Twitter. Yeah. That's cool. It. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Great. And uh, thanks uh, for uh, listening and thanks to all members participating in the Satoshi Radio Rings of Fire. And of course, thanks for everyone uh, helping to connect the world with us. If you like our content, then uh, please support us in our mission. Visit our website, connecttheworld.live, where you can also donate and subscribe, like and share our content on your favorite platform. We need you to complete our mission, Connect the World. So keep those notes running. Sets flowing and rings burning. And see you all next week with Rene Picard on the same Lightning Channel. Alveda, Simon. Hey, <laughs> hey, do.